Hello, dear friends and damn givers. Welcome to the Let's Give a Damn podcast. I'm your host, Nick LaPara, and as always, this is the show where we chat with people who saw something wrong in the world and gave a damn about it. Today, it's just me. No guest. Just you and me, raw and unfiltered. We do this every once in a while, and this week feels very fitting to do so again. I have a few thoughts I want to share, and I hope you'll stick around to listen. Before we begin, they are building two homes across the street from my home. And as you know, because of the pandemic, we're recording at home these days. So if you hear any banging, any shouting, any pounding, anything like that in the background, you'll know it's because they're building two really ugly homes across the street from my house here in Nashville. So sorry for any noise you may hear. Let's jump right in, shall we? For a few minutes this week, I want to talk with you about getting into trouble, good trouble. Friday, July 17 was a dark day for this nation and for the world. July 17 was the day C.T. Vivian and John Lewis left us. Cordy Tyndale Vivian, known to most people as C.T. Vivian, was born July 30, 1924 in Boonville, Missouri, and died on July 17, 2020 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was 95 years old. If my math is correct, he was two weeks shy of turning 96. John Lewis was born February 21, 1940 in Torrey, Alabama, and died on July 17, 2020 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was 80 years old. The cause of death? Stage 4 pancreatic cancer. Now, friends, may I quickly point out that no human enemy could get rid of John Lewis. They tried to many times, but cancer took him from us. I hate cancer. Fuck cancer. Cancer has probably taken a loved one from you. Cancer has taken loved ones from me. I hate cancer. In 2011, President Obama named John Lewis as a recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And here's what President Obama said about Representative Lewis. There's a quote inscribed over a doorway in Nashville where students first refused to leave lunch counters 51 years ago this February. And the quote said, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? It's a question John Lewis has been asking his entire life. It's what led him back to the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma after he had already been beaten within an inch of his life days before. It's why time and again, he faced down death so that all of us could share equally in the joys of life. It's why all these years later, he is known as the conscience of the United States Congress, still speaking his mind on issues of justice and equality. And generations from now, when parents teach their children what is meant by courage, the story of John Lewis will come to mind. An American who knew that change could not wait for some other person or for some other time, whose life is a lesson in the fierce urgency of now. A couple years later in 2013, Barack Obama named C.T. Vivian as a recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And here is what President Obama had to say about C.T. Vivian. A Baptist minister, C.T. Vivian was one of Dr. Martin Luther King's closest advisors. Martin taught us, he says, that it's in the action that we find out who we really are. Time and again, Reverend Vivian was among the first to be in the action. In 1947, joining a sit-in to integrate an Illinois restaurant, one of the first freedom riders in Selma on the courthouse steps to register blacks to vote for which he was beaten, bloodied, and jailed. Rosa Parks said of him, even after things had supposedly been taken care of and we had our rights, he was still out there, inspiring the next generation, including me, helping kids go to college with a program that would become upward bound. And at 89 years old, Reverend Vivian is still out there, still in the action, pushing us closer to our founding ideals. 
Friends, in this little monologue, I'm going to refer to John Lewis more than to C.T. Vivian. Lewis was more quotable, honestly. He was a very eloquent speaker. Not that C.T. Vivian wasn't. And to be honest, I don't know all that much about C.T. Vivian. I plan to change that in the days and weeks ahead. But they both lived equally powerful lives. So I imagine both of them would agree on every quote and everything I share here today. John Lewis participated in the lunch counter sit-in movement designed to integrate restaurants. Also, he was one of the early freedom riders. These were activists that attempted to integrate public transit in the racially segregated South. And most importantly, in my opinion, he was one of the keynote speakers at the 1963 March on Washington. You know, the one where Martin Luther King Jr. gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. And he spoke there alongside Dr. King at the age of 23. Incredible. And in March of 1965, Lewis marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. He was beat within an inch of his life for doing things like that. At the beginning, I referenced this phrase, good trouble. And that's one of the phrases and ideas that John Lewis shared often. He encouraged us. He encourages us still, even after he is gone. In years in decades, in centuries after he is gone, he will still be encouraging us to get into trouble, necessary trouble. I resonate with that deeply. I am in no way comparing myself to John Lewis or C.T. Vivian at all, at all, at all. But I do want to share a little thing about when I was growing up. I am one of 12 children. I have 11 siblings. I'm the second oldest. My parents are now in their 60s. But if you asked my dad right now today who gave him most of his gray hairs, he would immediately, without even thinking about it, say, Nick, I was a raucous raiser. I was a troublemaker. I always have and still always do things in a way that either slightly or intensely rub people the wrong way. And as I've gotten older, though, I haven't tried to change that about myself. Not that I'm not trying to get better and better and better but I haven't tried to change that about myself. Instead, I've tried to channel that into doing good. The more I learned about amazing people like John Lewis and C.T. Vivian and obviously Dr. King and Claudette Colvin and Rosa Parks and Angela Davis and Ida B. Wells and so many others, the more I realized that we should be getting into more trouble, not less. You know, when we were kids, for most of us, our parents told us, to not do something because it was wrong, and to not do this because it was wrong, and that because it was wrong. But wrong compared to what, though? Usually, a household has an established set of rules, things you can and cannot do, and these rules are different for every household. If you step over the line, you get into trouble, and there's usually some sort of punishment for getting into trouble. And many of these things we were forbidden from doing were based on opinions, likes, dislikes of our parents or caretakers. They weren't necessarily right or wrong. Again, they're different in every household, right? And also, growing up, we were told to respect authority, to respect the police, to respect the government, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm all for respecting people as much and as often as I can. Don't take me wrong. I don't walk around looking for opportunities to be a troublemaker or an asshole. But as I've gotten older, I've realized that it's not as simple as saying, obey the government, obey the cops, obey your boss obey that person, etc. What happens when those in authority are acting in unjust ways? What happens when the rules or laws hurt certain kinds of people and not others, help certain kinds of people and not others? What happens if the entire system in which you live is infected with racism, xenophobia, and other unjust belief systems? My point in bringing all of this up is this. These days aren't that much different than the 60s. And the 60s weren't much different than many decades and eras before it. When injustices are being committed, anytime those things happen, we will have to ignore laws, rules to do the right thing. Not all the time. Again, I'm not advocating for getting into needless trouble. But 
many, many, many times, you will have to ignore the law, ignore the rules set in place by society, by government, by local authorities to do the right thing. I think back on Corey Ten Boom. Some of you may know about her, Dutch Christian watchmaker and a writer who worked with her family to help many Jews escape the Nazis from the Holocaust by hiding them in her home. They disobeyed the rules. They disobeyed the laws to do the right thing. This is the good trouble John Lewis talked about. Friends, remember that slavery was once legal and those who freed slaves were criminals. Remember, the Holocaust was legal and those who hid Jews were criminals. We can't let the government and rules and laws guide our morals to guide who we are and what we are to do. This is the good trouble that John Lewis talked about. Today, many horrible things aren't legal anymore, but I believe they are still part of the system. You can't flip a switch to get rid of horrible things that have been part of a system for hundreds and hundreds of years. Police brutality, redlining, covert kinds of segregation, the preschool to prison pipeline, the prison industrial complex, human trafficking, crony capitalism, regulations and companies and systems that contribute to our climate crisis. These are all illegal things that are still happening in different ways and that are still fucking up people and society. So what are we to do? Get into good trouble. Some of these last few thoughts that I just shared might feel a little disjointed. I've got a lot going on up in my head. My intention, though, was to point out that just because something is the law or someone in authority says we should do something or shouldn't do something doesn't mean we have to go along with it. I want to leave you all with three calls to action, three ways you can honor the legacies of John Lewis, C.T. Vivian, and so many others. Number one, registered to vote. Double check that you are registered to vote. Vote up and down the ballot. Don't just vote once every four years for a president. If you don't know who your local council members are, change that. If you don't know who your mayor is and what they stand for, change that. If you haven't written to your governor lately to ask him or her to please do or do not something, change that. Who is your congressman? Who is your congresswoman? Who are your senators? Have they heard from you lately? If you're not voting, you don't get to bitch about what happens. If you're not actively helping to be part of the change and getting into good trouble every once in a while, you don't get to whine and complain about how things are. In 2012, John Lewis said this, and he may have said it other times, but I remember the time in 2012. He said this, my dear friends, your vote is precious almost sacred. It is the most powerful, nonviolent tool we have to create a more perfect union. Number two, watch John Lewis, Good Trouble. It's available for rent now. Watch John Lewis, Get In The Way on PBS for free. And read a tremendous book, Walking With The Wind, a memoir of the movement by John Lewis. And go beyond John Lewis. I'm mentioning him because, again, he was, ve- he was very famous. He was very involved in politics. So there's a lot out there to learn from him and about him. But there are so many others. Learn about the hundreds of black leaders that have gotten into good trouble in days gone by. Number three, get into good trouble every day. Sometimes it'll be big. Sometimes it'll be small. And I can't even begin to tell you what those things will be for you because they're different for everyone. I want to finish today by sharing some audio of some of my favorite C.T. Vivian and John Lewis moments. I mean, you know what you're getting into before. It's just like with Sheriff Clark and all the rest of it, all right? Uh, uh, You knew what you're getting into. If you're not ready for that, you shouldn't be there. That's one thing to intellectually be ready. No, I mean, it's but, another thing to but, be standing but, in front of somebody but, but, with a gun but, but, who wants but, but, to shoot you. But you, you, you didn't see any. You didn't see any change in me in either case, right? Uh, 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 because that's it. I mean, you know what you're there for. You know what you're doing. You know the cost on both sides. You know the cost if you don't. If somebody doesn't, right? 
you know that all your life you've been waiting to get rid of racism, right? And you know until you can break it in the South, it's not going to be broken. And so let's get it on. And you've got your best chance. You've got a great leader. You've got a method that, as far as I'm concerned, I'd already tried. I knew it would work. I had a God that sent me there. But you also had a wife and That's, but, children. But, oh, wait, wait a minute. But they also knew. My wife also knew. Remember, we did this together. And that's so important to see, is that our wives knew, and we did it together. Remember, my wife, Les Dayton, came to Peoria, right? She understood that this was more than just something that happened, right? And, that, uh, and she understood that the same God that sent her uh, from Dayton uh, to Nashville is the same God that could take care of her whether I was there or not. That was C.T. Vivian back in 2010 talking about the Freedom Rides. I loved how he pushed back on the interviewer. I loved his resolve. I loved his passion. And this next one is John Lewis speaking at the opening ceremony for the Legacy Museum and National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Montgomery, Alabama in April 2018. Some people will argue that this is in the past that we need to forget it. We can never ever forget what happened to hundreds and thousands of people. Tell them, tell them to come and walk in my shoes. Each and every person must remember that slavery was the law of the land for 206 years. For another 100 years, segregation in some form or another in every corner of our country. It is true, in the 50 years since the Civil Rights Movement, we have made progress, but we still have a long way to go. There are forces today in America trying to take us back, but we will not go back. We will build a new and better America. Those who fail to understand this history are doomed to repeat it. Friends, let me finish this little monologue with this. And thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for listening in. Let me finish with this. I don't know how many of you believe in heaven or an afterlife, but I do. I don't know what it looks like or where it is or even how it is, but I do know this. John Lewis and C.T. Vivian are there. And I also believe Martin King is there. Can you imagine what that reunion might have looked like on July 17, just a few short days ago? These two men have not seen King since, when did King die? Like 1968, I'm pretty sure. That's amazing. They haven't seen their friend for decades. What a reunion. And what I wouldn't have given to be a fly on the wall when they reunited. So friends, let us honor the legacies of John Lewis, C.T. Vivian, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, and so many others. Let us honor their legacies by continuing to fight for justice, for equity, for peace, for nonviolence, for a better future for us and for our children and our children's children and for generations beyond them. That's it for today. Thank you all for listening. Let's Give a Damn is part of the Matter Media family. You can reach me anytime at hello at letsgiveadam.com. You can learn more about the show at letsgiveadam.com. Sending lots of love and peace to each one of you. And remember, in the minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years ahead, I hope you'll find meaningful ways to give a damn and to get into good trouble. 